Okay, so seven o'clock, uh, we start the meeting for the Littleton Board of Health. Welcome all new citizens. <laughs> uh, first thing on the agenda, administrative matters, open meeting law review with Diane Crory, town clerk. Thanks for having me. Um, just um, want to go over a few things, a uh, few matters that have been brought to my attention regarding open meeting law and about um, recusing yourselves when um, matters come before the board um, and some um, public hearing matters that have been brought to my attention. Um, one of the biggest things that you have to remember um, that email is um, public record and when you start um, communicating with others um, through email um, it is a public record um, and if you are uh, communicating with um, other members on the board that once you involve other members of the board um, you have to ca I caution you very sternly <laughs> in a gentle way that um, if you start um, talking to one another um, and a third party becomes involved in that um, conversation, a third member becomes a quorum mm -hmm. um, and you are violating open meeting law. Um, the other thing that you have to be careful of is when you are talking with a resident outside of um, meetings, if you are giving them advice, you are also violating open meeting law because you cannot be giving um, residents outside of this um, meeting advice on something that's going on outside of a meeting. Um, you, that's not your job to be giving them advice outside of this meeting. So if somebody sends you an email, which your emails, by the way, are public record. It's, um, once you are sworn in and you give me um, an email, which I ask you what email you are um, giving to me to allow the public to um, actually contact you because you are a public official um, and you give that to me, it, they can contact you, but you have to understand that you should not be giving them advice. Um, and once you start doing that, you are violating um, the code. So I caution you when somebody does contact you, you know, just say, bring it forward to the Board of Health, ask us for um, a meeting, and we'll talk to we'll discuss it to you, with you when you come before us. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest, biggest things you have to be careful of when you start uh, contacting, when a resident contacts you. Um, you are violating um, open meeting law. So I want to just kind of talk to you that talk to you about that. Um, know that when you do um, have start having conversations with residents, that does become part of their file um, because it is um, a public record. So anything that you do talk to that resident about, that does become part of their record. So um, also know that. So um, if somebody does ask you for that information, um, that does become part of their record and some, anyone, any resident, attorney or an, and anyone else can ask for that record so that does become part of the record and can be asked for by anyone in the town or outside of the town their attorney or whatever so know that um, also understand that um, if you have a public hearing and that once that public hearing is closed at the end of the night you should not be discussing that uh, that public hearing at all you shouldn't be going back at the end of the night and be just discussing anything about what happened earlier in the night. You are violating that public hearing um, what happened during the early in the night. Um, I did have a couple people come down and, and talk to me about um, something that happened. I, it was probably about a month ago, I, and I honestly don't remember what public hearing it was, but they did come down and say that they had left the public hearing um, they said that it had been closed. Um, they asked if there was anything that was, if it was done, the discussion was done. They left and they said that at the end of the night, um, something else was discussed 
at the end of the night. So um, I caution you that um, you are violating that public hearing data. Um, you cannot be discussing anything further once that public hearing is closed. So you shouldn't be talking about it once that public hearing is closed because they have an opportunity to, you know, to be here. Because when you say it's closed, they leave and you're discussing further something that you've already said that is closed. So um, be careful about what you're saying once, once that public hearing is closed. Also, um, know that um, you need to be careful if, um, if you have family members that um, work for anybody that comes before you, you should be recusing yourself from that, um, that hearing or, or anything that has to do with anything that is going on with somebody that comes before you. Um, that is a violation. So you need to recuse yourself from that hearing or anybody that comes before you. So you need to recuse yourself. You need to um, leave the room and have nothing to do with that um, notice that's going on during that entire time. If you do not, um, then several things can happen. Um, that notice, that the public hearing that is before you, um, it's, a, it's a strict violation and um, people can come back and um, there can be charges that are brought both against the person that um, has come before and, and, and you as a board. Just family or it is, you know, it's outside of the outside of No, it's, it's, so it's anything that, so you could have um, a, a financial gain, whether it's not you directly, but your family members. So mm -hmm. it's, whether it's, you know, siblings, you know, parents, uh, children, or so anything family. like that. It's just, you know, family. So you know, need to caution you about that, so. That's the 268A form that should be filed. We thank you for coming. Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Can I ask the, um, uh, the council about this too? Um, about residents contacting people? It, mm -hmm. I, I ask that my email not be given out to people because if someone contacts me, all I'm going to say is you have to submit through the Board of Health because I'm not allowed to really say anything else. Mm -hmm. And Council said I was, but I find that I, I don't know where that, that line is not distinct to me. So you said that um, people can contact us, but is it okay for me to say I don't want, like if someone calls in into the office, I would prefer that my, they not tell them to contact me, so just it, so it's very clear. So when you take the position of Board of Health, um, you are a public official now. Yeah. And legally, we have to be able to tell them they can contact okay. you. That answers it. But I'm the thing is, they me. really can't contact you other than to say, you know, I'd like to come before the board to talk about something, but you can't give them advice about anything. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so you're the board of health chairman, so they they will more than likely come to, before you to say yeah. that we'd like to come. They should be contacting the board of health. To yeah, do that's that, but, that's it's on the front. But sometimes they more than likely may know you better than they know somebody from the board of health office. So that's why they may oh. contact you directly. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 I think Louise and I signed up for that open meeting open law. Meeting law review. Yeah. It's, so it's going to become. So we're, the town of Littleton is going to make it mandatory that all members attend all of those, mm -hmm. um, because sometimes it's not as no, clear. People don't always. Once I give them information as to where they should be going and reading, it, sometimes it's not as easy to understand. It's better that you go attend at least one of those yeah. conferences. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys are interested. It's on a, was it November on a Saturday or something? 15th or the 17th? There's two things. I think you knew. I also know about it. It may not seem like a big deal, but you know, the Attorney General's office, it's a $1,000 fine. Um, you know, the first time, you know, a complaint comes across the board, it comes to the board. And um, and then it goes to the attorney general as well, and then after that, all complaints go directly to the attorney general, and then they start a case, and then if it becomes you know 
something that's an ongoing, um, then it, it becomes pretty serious. So, so for the, if they need something, they say, you come to the board mm -hmm. and, and state your case. Very simple. Bring you engineer, whatever. Right. Just don't say anything, don't talk about anything. Yeah. That way you're free. You don't have to worry about it. Right. But any complaint would come to this board first? So initially it would come here, um, yep, and you would have 30 days to, um, to correct it. And if you don't correct it in 30 days, then the Attorney General becomes involved. Okay, but it will come to the board. Not, okay. Okay. Yeah. We appreciate you coming. And Thank you for, I uh, hope everybody yeah. and, got the message. Yeah. And one other thing is, um, so I know that Peter Yap has sent a couple couple of letters um, to the board and he was just wondering um, if you did get them, because he, he says he's never you know, heard them being read into the minutes. Or well, he sent a letter. Mm -hmm. So any letter that comes in, any correspondence we have to read into the minutes? Well, uh, so if he, if in the correspondence he's, they're asking for them to be read or to be discussed, and okay, well, I have to. I'll look at the okay. letter. I didn't think that was in there. Yeah. Um, we can look at the letter again and then okay. see if it's in there a bit. So let me. I just want to be really clear sure. on this. Sure. So if it, if, because I, I need to know if any correspondence comes in, if that needs to be read. But you're saying that if it comes in. Yep. And if they're asking it to be read, then we have to read it. Yes, if they if they ask for the, them to be read into the minutes, then yes, yeah, you do need to read them into the minutes. Or if they're if they're stating that they have concerns about something that's going on, you should probably. Um, okay, so that's different. So yeah. if they're stating yeah. they have concerns. There's, yeah. So there's two different things. If they're if they're stating concerns, that's something that you can just discuss amongst yourselves. But if they're asking for them to be read into the minutes, then they should be read into the minutes. Good. Can I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> so in that one, the Peter Yap yeah, yeah. one, um, I think he had asked verbally Shelley, and so when I handed okay. them over, I said Shelley asked them to be read to the, read out loud. So is a verbal asking enough? If he if he came into the office and asked for them to be read into the minutes, then yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Somebody there that so uh, smiling said, I hope they get fine. <laughs> Look at the smile on their faces. We're going to show them, right, that we're not going to give them the satisfaction. <laughs> we're going to follow the law right through that, to the line. Okay. And then if we have a question, oh, sure. like something like that, should we, it's, is it okay if we ask you directly? Sure. Yeah, okay. All right. That's good. Any other questions? No, we got enough questions already. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. Next on the agenda are the minutes, and um, we've got two sets of minutes: seven thirty-one and nine eleven. And I did have some uh, comments. I wanted to make them a little bit more um, complete. So I went back to which one's that? That's seven thirty-one. So this is the. 11. Is this okay if I pass these around? This is the Yeah. So it's in track changes, so it's basically Thank you. what you sent around and then it's got some changes. But um, I went back into the um, into the video and just added a few things. And I also, and I'm sorry, it's not complete. On, I didn't make enough copies, but I've got some from. July 30, 31st, too. So on, on 9 11, does anybody else have any comments and do they have any issues with what, what um, I, I, I did here? I think here? on the 31st, the 7th, I was. Okay, let's do the 9 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. 9 11? Yeah. yeah. Um, my first comment is that Lisa is the clerk, not me. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So what I was trying to do um, was one thing was make sure that we had when there was a decision made what the basis of the decision was. And then um, Janet's going to find out if we can put a link to the meeting here so that if there are any questions or people want more information because these are um, briefer than the, the ones we had before, and, uh, which is good, I think. But I, I don't know if anyone else has any comments on that. But if we have a video referenced here, then people would know they could just go to the video if they had any questions, and I think in that way it would be complete. So I just want to get one discussion six college way. Uh, none of your letters were present at the hearing, so it has been postponed until October of 2018. We've got it here tonight on 925. Thank you. The date. Oh, that's yeah, but I think it's a discussion tonight. Oh, no, it's a hearing, yeah. Yeah, because there was a discussion last time. Yeah. Hearing was postponed. So, should it's a new changed? permit application. Yeah. But the minutes say that the hearing was also was postponed. Yeah. Was so this. Right yeah, that's a good idea. Let's just get rid of it. So, do you want to check the video on that, Janet? But it sounds like just get rid of it. So we. No, that's the um, that's for the cons con. So I'll clarify. It wasn't Board of Health. It was oh, the okay. Conservation Commission meeting. Um, the butters didn't show up, and so the oh, hearing okay. had to be continued. But that not the Board of Health. So I will clarify that. And then um, I also just to be complete, uh, I'd like to have the when we're talking about, especially with the, the bylaws, them attached, so that people can see what what we're talking about. So in this case, because it's the mm -hmm. um, the minutes, we could put in the final ones, you know, the ones after the discussion, and then that would be part of the minutes. I think that would work. I'm not sure I understand. So that. when we go into this meeting, we had a set of bylaws that we could attach to the agenda, I think. And then when we discuss it, we updated the bylaws, so the updated ones would go with this, I think. Okay. I don't know if we want to attach to the to the, the agenda or not. No, I think the agenda is just the agenda. Okay. 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 So you're going to have um, when we make these decisions, like with the um, regulation changes and the um, what's we're really looking for, like the rationale for it, the decision. Yeah, that's in the in this case that's in. Because I think those when changes we, when we talked about um, the um, hundred foot buffer from the wetlands was too strict. Um, Gino thought that it should be fifty. We also mentioned. Um, cited a couple of towns that had the 100, 100 foot um, regulations too. Yeah. I don't oh, know I we see. Should, I don't know if we should say, you know, the reason why we it is 100. We probably said something like that on, a, on the lines of that. Yeah. That Groton, Westford met the rationale for the 100 versus 50. Yeah. And also we'll have, I think that's good to have in there wherever we can, but we'll also have it in the um, proposed changes. It's mm -hmm. in the table now. Mm -hmm. At least I think that, that one I think is.
we okay on 911? Yep. Yep, looks good. Yep. Okay. Do you want to vote on that one? Sure. Do you want to uh, make a motion to approve the minutes for um, the Board of Health September 11th meeting with the changes that we've made in the edits? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now we're on uh, July 31st. Make a motion to accept the meeting. Oh, I had, I had a. Having read it, yes. I read it. Oh, okay. And there was a second yeah. page moved by Baker. It was moved by Baker, seconded by Flanagan, voted three to two. <coughs> opposition by Leone and um, Nichols to have. Oh, wait a minute. Wrong, wrong one. That actually was on the um, the other one. This is that was on the low impact development, which is actually in the special permit they had to get. No, that so wasn't the one that I had a okay. question about. Because there was a discussion here, in in here somewhere about the the special permit that was required and what the requirements were in the special permit, which overlapped with our discussion of what the comments were. Because in some places. Um, the special permit didn't include things that had to do with uh, water quality, so, so I, I yeah, put I that. What, that's not the one that I okay, but I had a I had a comment in there about here to check the video and add that in there. This one here. Some of us were concerned about their wells. Yeah, but it said it was yeah moved and seconded. I don't think we voted. Did did we have, we didn't vote for the well water? That was just maybe a suggestion. That yeah, there. That's the other thing. They're all suggestions, so we're not asking. We there's, can't tell anybody to do anything. Comments. They're just comments. Yeah, it was just a suggestion. Not to a suggest, vote, yeah, and not a. <coughs> And I don't think it was seconded and voted on it. I'll go back and watch it. I yeah. watched that video, and I think it was okay. Yeah. All right. That'd be great. Thanks. I didn't make it through the whole. Thing. Um, could you could you do that one and then bring this set next time, and we'll approve them then? Okay, that'd be great. Was it the eleven? Was it? Uh, yeah, July thirty first. Okay. Some of these are the discussions were just really long. Okay. Um, I was thinking since we are running behind, we're supposed to be 720 on 14 Dogwood, that um, if, unless anybody has any objections, we could bump the rest of the administrative matters to the end of the meeting so that we yeah. can get people in and out. Okay. Is that okay with you, Janet? Mm -hmm. Gina. Okay. With that. All right. So we have a public um, hearing on 14 Dogwood Road, Teresa LeBlanc. Doug Smith, Soto Smith Designs. And have to plan the dog would you really want to go over it. I notified the abutters I've got the So this septic system replacement, it's on, um, luckily it's on a lot that is double. It's got two lots put together where most of the lots around the lake here are not really that big. So it helped quite a bit. Um, originally what I tried to do is keep 10 feet off the boundary because of the 10 foot fill setback. And that's what I did. Um, this lot is 140 feet by 100. And I've got the system highlighted here with all the fill at least 10 feet away. I did have to put a small poly barrier on this side, only 18 feet long, just because 
where the house is, it is there's a small retaining wall and the ground drops and that kept the fill working. And that's the reason I had to notify the abutters because in your bylaws talks about um, if you use an impervious barrier, you have to do that. Um, so not currently there's two dry wells in the front in a tank on the side of the house and it didn't pass the title five so what we're proposing is to put a 1500 gallon tank and a thousand gallon pump chamber and then the presby system up in this corner and a couple of the variances that i was looking for oh one was a one foot drop in the elevation to get all this fill on the down slope side to fit better. So um, instead of four feet above season or high water table three. for the put three. Water, it's three. Uh, that's the first one. Then we did have to do a sieve analysis. When I did the test hole in the perk, it was in the month of May, and the ground was a little bit too wet to run the perk, so we had a test done at UMass Lab. So that's the other variance, um, or a local upgrade approval, I should call it. And then basically the Littleton Board of Health variance, Regulation 23, this small barrier. And Jim Griffey had looked at the plan, and he it's pretty much done with his review. He gave me a few um, things he wanted looked at. Originally, I had a, um, as the pipe leaves the house, and it has to come out the side of the house here, the way the crawl space and basement is all situated, it can't be changed to come out the front. So there has to be a bend. Originally, I had what they call a mini manhole in there, and I don't think Jim was real fond of it, so we decided over the phone to go with a clean sweep, one of those, um, mm -hmm. like what an electrician would use for piping that is an extremely long uh, bend with a clean out after it. So that was basically what he had looked at. He wanted me to change the manhole to something like that, show some extra grading, which I did. And um, that's basically it. So he has received the new ones. I have the different dates. Uh, September 20th was the last revision for what he was looking for. And the, the existing permit is for how many bedrooms? Two bedrooms, right? Yes, it's two. And this, it has a deed restriction where it has to stay two yeah. in this house. Okay. And it's, in, it's on the record right now. The proposed system is two bedrooms? Correct. Yeah. Well, according to our agent, I don't think you have a problem. But the board has to. Yes, so I can. Consent. Does somebody want to read 14 dog one into the record? Oh, 14 dogwood. dogwood. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. There's, um, are there any butters here tonight? No. Can I read Jim's comments? Sure. Sure. <coughs> 14 dogwood road. The septic system for this site is in the high ground water table and therefore would be considered in failure by Title V. Soil testing was conducted and plans drawn for the replacement of the system. The site has a number of restrictions which make it difficult to design a septic system in full compliance with Title V and your local regulations. Sloping site, high seasonal water table, and high perk rate. The proposed design would require a reduction of the groundwater offset from four feet to three feet and, you, and the use of a barrier on the house side of the system. The groundwater offset reduction will help the grading needed and the barrier allows for a further reduction of the grading towards the house. This will help minimize the efforts of, the effects of potential surface runoff. I don't have a problem with the request. The lot is served by Town Water. It's only a two-bedroom house, and the request will help minimize the potential for surface runoff issues. Anybody have any questions? No. no. How did the SIP analysis come back? Um, I've got, uh, gave it a point three three factor uh, sandy wall. I have a copy of that. 
does that translate to per grade? Uh, I'd say about 15 minutes an inch, roughly 15 to 18, if I had to do a comparison to it. I know I got it. Um, I think it had like 61% sand and then had the clay and the silt. Um, when I go for a two foot groundwater on set? Um, could have, but I figured three to have a little more of a buffer just to. What's the angle on your sweep? A little bit conservative. What's the angle on your sweep? How many degrees? Um, those long sweeps, I mean, it. The full 90? Yeah, it's, it's a 90, but it's very long. It's what electricians use. It's yeah. a gray schedule radiant. That way they can get the wires through it when they're using it for conduit. And um, it's, it's such a gentle long bend. It's, it's pretty much proven that things won't get so clogged. Okay. And then you do it with a clean out as a backup. So. Okay. How many feet is the cleanup? Maybe? The, um, there's about a four foot piece of pipe here. It's hard to see because that's the old tank. Yeah. And then the cleanup goes around, I mean the uh, bend, and then that's the cleanup right after it. So you have one right inside the house too. And there's one inside the house in the basement. Too, so. so it can definitely easily get unclogged if it ever did, which I don't think it will. Other questions or a motion? Just, I mean, I don't know anything about the sweep, but I mean, one before and after the sweep or anything like that? Does that make sense? Well, if since there's one in the house only four before, feet away, uh -huh. you could always unscrew that in the crawl space basement mm -hmm. and get to it. Okay. So that really does put one on each side of it. Okay. I'd um, like to make a motion to um, approve the Title V system for 14 Dogwood Road as designed by Soil, Soil Smith. Soil Smith Engineering. I second. The date of the, the plan here? I second. Oh, well, revised yeah, we've got September to revise 20th. 20th okay. okay. That's the latest one. Second. Gino second. Oh, great. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Pass. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and next is 24 Long Lake Road. Twenty-four Long Lake Road. Yeah, I'll be right up for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are, are there any abutters here for twenty-four Long Lake? Twenty-six. Okay. Do you want to state your name? Just uh, sure. You. Um, my name is Donna Theodore. Okay. 26. 26 Long Lake, Long Lake Road. Okay. Can you pass that back to Jen? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Did everyone sign in? There's a sign-in sheet. I got, I got you guys. I keep an eye on you guys <laughs> with a smile in your face. This is a good one. Oh yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, um, Doug Smith again. Um, this lot is a little smaller than the one I just did. It's on Long, Long Lake Road. The size of the land is 75 feet 
by 100 feet. Um, has a water line coming in the front, and the existing system is in the backyard, and it's got an existing small system here which didn't pass the Title V. So what I designed on this was a new tank, 1,500 gallon, then a 1,000 gallon pump chamber, and then a, a two bedroom stone and pipe system. Mm -hmm. The reason I went with that is I went with a Presby system, it would have had to be 400 square feet minimum and with a two bedroom yeah. house and a fast perk that we had here, a 300 square foot fit. So because the land is small, okay. it sort of made sense to go that route. Uh, this does have a barrier that goes around it. I was able to keep 20 feet from the house to the mm -hmm. system. And I was able to keep far enough from the boundaries for the system itself that the fill was going to uh, come into place. That's why it has a 40 mil poly barrier going around. And then the fill, as you can see, those um, highlighted lines. The um, Jim reviewed it and asked me to do a few things. One thing he asked is he said, why don't I put a small swale near the boundary and I put that in a stone pit because of um, building this ground up, no, this would prevent water from going on the neighbor's property, so. Did you put a swale, did you put a lot of stone? Yes, it's gonna be a um, swale that will have stone in it, mm -hmm. perforated pipe, and then this small Correct. pit at the end. It's not too big, but just enough so water going out. And, and the way the roofs are shaped in this house, it shouldn't be too much water. I've got some pictures. The, um, what do you, uh, what's the grade increase that you're going to have from current conditions to final? The, um, on this end, the system would be about two and a half feet higher than it is now. Okay. This, this porch is on post, so so some of the fill can actually go right around. <coughs> Right Which side of that piece of property right is the abutter that's here tonight, 26? 26. Yeah, which side of the uh, property are, are you if on? If you're facing the front, down on the right. You're in the right. Downhill. <laughs> okay, that's nice. So this, on this side where that's okay. where. Mm -hmm. Do you have any problem? Uh, I'm a bit well, taken care of. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm here to voice my concerns, yes. Okay. As soon as he finish. Let's him let him finish. As soon as he finish, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And so a few things that are in the favor is um, this is the back porch. You can see how it's yep. up here. Mm -hmm. And you have a little bit of a roof going this way. And the only section of roof that will go anywhere towards the new tank in the system is this one right. small section right. of the porch. Right. Everything else is going the other direction. Yeah, so, so that helps. Jim was <coughs> concerned with that because of changing the grade of the land, doing what we have to do, mm -hmm. that um, you don't want to be adding water. So, um, Are they planning to um, build another house? No, it's um, the same. house is for sale and this has to be put together to have the house be able to be sold. Um, a few other things I changed with Jim. And we had uh, shallow to ledge in this lot. We got uh, 55 inches depth mm -hmm. for the two test holes. And he was thinking, uh, can you really get a full size tank in? And once I did some cross sections, I realized it would have been hard to get the entire depth of a tank in the ground perfect. So, so you gotta get up luckily the pipe in the basement can be raised. So that pipe is gonna be raised 15 inches and by doing that, a full tank, not a ledge tank, but a full one can go to be put in along with that pump higher up. And a couple things uh, that I want to mention is with the 55 inch that we had to ledge, the, um, this, since it's sloping about a little over two feet from where the system starts to the low end of it, when this gets finished being designed, the um, top part closest to the D box would be five and a half feet above wedge, and this bottom side would be seven feet above. And then each field is going to be higher, then, right? Yes. About yeah. what? Four feet? 
It's um, one foot above the ground level. So it would be yeah. almost four but feet. But then you get a your foot right. thickness and your covers. Um, That's all you can do, I guess? Yeah, it's... Could I, can I look at the cross section? Sure. A small lot. Yeah, it's a point one seven two acre. So Jim had asked for a treatment um, tank, or a tight tank? Well, not a tight tank. He talked oh, yes. about treatment, like one of those systems, like a FAST system or SeptiTech or one yeah. of those. And I don't think it's necessary, in my, my professional opinion, because the, the cost, well, number one, the cost of those treatment systems, it's, uh, it adds at least ten to 12000 right off the bat for the, the cost of putting it in. Then you have the maintenance agreement, which uh, they have to monitor it twice a year. They have to come, you, you're paying that. And it's, of course, has to go into the deed. And it's, um, to me, it's a, it's a huge expense. When I don't think the benefit on this slot is justified because, like I said, to have it five and he, he was concerned because of the depth of the wedge, but with knowing that it's going to be five and a half feet above wedge on one end and seven over the, the other side. Once you have all the soil that does exist and add the soil that my design will be putting in under the bed, I think that's plenty of offer to purify everything and have it go through. Plus, with the two compartment tank that is required in this town, which I agree with too, I like two compartment tanks and the filter, and then going into the pump, I think by the time it gets to the system and through the stone, it's going to there's going to be enough of a um, separation in uh, soil to go through to take care of it. So I I know Jim wrote that, but I don't agree with it. So I'm going to I'll, I'll read what Jim's notes are into the record. So 24 Long Lake Road, the septic system for this site is in a high groundwater table and therefore would be considered in failure by Title, title 5. Soil testing was conducted and plans drawn for the replacement of the system. The site has a number of restrictions which make it difficult to design a septic system in full compliance with Title 5 and your local regulations. Sloping site, high seasonal water table, shallow depth to wet ledge, and very limited lot size. The proposed design would require approval for the use of less than four feet of pervious soil, 25 inches, and the use of a barrier around most of the system. Title V allows Board of Health to reduce the pervious soil requirement up to two feet. A minimum of two feet of pervious soil is required. The leaching area, as proposed, will be four feet above the high groundwater. Based on the soil testing and the area available for the system, the only other alternative would be a tight tank. I spoke with the system designer and suggested he include the use of a treatment septic tank as part of the design. The treatment tank provides a cleaner wastewater prior to its discharge to the leaching area, which I felt important given the shallow depth to ledge. If the design includes a treatment tank, I would not have a, any an issue with this request. So, um, does do we have any other questions or comments mm -hmm. from the board, or should we ask that? Um, other, than, other than the additional cost for the treatment system, the treatment tank, what about size? Would it fit on this lot? Or? Yeah, it goes inside a tank. So, what would uh, it's in lieu of the pump chamber that's there now that would be in that mm -hmm. particular box? Okay, so, okay. Do you want to? Um, sure. Um, again, my name is Donna Theodore, and I'm at 26 Long Lake. Um, just real quick, I moved in in 2015, and I've done an unbelievable amount of improvements to my home. Like, my whole life savings is in it. So I have a lot of stake right now, and um, I, I'm here in a spirit of cooperation. However, um, I have to rely on the Board of Health for the actual system design, doing what's best for the property. But um, my concern is definitely, number one, the runoff, because she's on high, higher ground. 
and I'm low lying. And when I moved in, like there's no grass over the air; it's just all dirt. Everything comes washing down. My larger concern is the oak trees that lie in the property because absolutely there will be no way these trees are uh, on safe ground. As soon as they start digging, the whole root system is going to be upset. And these are oak trees that are like four, uh, almost four feet circumference. And I have pictures to give you a visual. There's just no way that they could ever dig and not upset the root system. And you upset the root, root system, you kill the tree. And by the time the tree dies off, uh, the current owner will be long gone and it will become the new owner's responsibility or my responsibility. Um, the first thing I did when I moved in was prune the trees because nobody had ever done anything. Just the branches alone were scary and I spent like $2,500 out of my own money to prune back what was hanging over my roof. Now the trees are there and um, there's just no way. There's like there's the tree and then the width of my driveway and then the whole septic is just on the other side of that, the proposed, all the digging that would have to take place. So I have pictures, if that helps you understand what I'm up against here. Whose property are the trees on? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, that he has, you have the benchmark tree, that's the one yeah. with the yeah, ribbon. Yeah, that's on her property. So that's the visual. That is, this tree that's wrapped in ribbon is on the design, and the one beside it is even more huge. Like, I'm talking Big three one. feet. It's probably at least 200 years old. And it's a very kind of campy area, so by all measures today, they would have cleared some of this before they started building. But, uh, so that's one picture. And, then, and also the root system. Tree. What's that? Oh. That's the one that has the benchmark. Yeah, that's the benchmark. And, and this is one is on right on the very close to the boundary. So is this your house, this white house? Yes, okay. and my garage is. Um, and if you do, you know, I had to do some homework because I, I, I've only been there three years, and um, if one of those trees is weakened, it would literally crush the house, either house. If, if, if it were to fall. So I have um, pictures. And then the root system itself is probably, it said most oak trees, the root system is only 18 inches down. So it's very scary to be upsetting and digging and all of that. Do you um, want them to take the trees down? I, I don't think any digging should happen until, at, at a minimum, these two huge trees come down. Because they're going to be digging right on the other side of them. It's insane. So it sounds like you'd like to have them taken, taken uh, down. Well, I, I'm vehemently opposed to any digging before yeah. the trees are removed. Okay. That's why I'm here. There's and then there's the added issue of the runoff. Like, like mm -hmm. I, I just, I know on the plan it's an impervious barrier, but that's like a poly barrier. That's not even a wall. It's just plastic. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so it's almost as thick as a swimming pool line, and no, nothing goes through it as far as. Um, Effluent or water, it's very thick. It's 40 units. Well, you're talking about surface runoff, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. do you have any swales there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a swale. Yeah. Do you want to explain to her the, the swale? Sure. Um, it's sort of like a retention area. Yeah. I See, right, any water coming down this way, we collect it in this swell right near the boundary and then go into a small pit right there. So that, that would take any surface so water. So it's not a down. trenching, it's a it's just one hole. Yeah, it would be they would dig down maybe eighteen inches, put stone in a piece of perforated pipe that has a little bit of slope to it and then have it in there so any water created by this and coming out will hit this and stop and not go on your property because that's you can't have water from one property going to another that's just not well not yeah right. as, as i said when i moved in it uh, i mean there is no grass in this yard and when i moved in the first thing water was coming down oh my god it was mm -hmm. like clear across the driveway so i had to put stones yeah, yeah. just to kind of hold things back a little bit 
Would you be happy if he put a bigger swell and a lot of stone in one area? Well, I, I mean, I would admit. Well, I can uh, tell you a few things. First, uh, what if this overflows? That's the thing. Like when there's a lot of rain, you were, you you got high groundwater and you're relying on one small retention. I, I mean, I have French drains and they they overflow. Do you, you have know? Uh, stormwater drains in the street? Yes, I think there was down on the corner, if I remember correctly. I wonder if there's a way to tap into that. Tap into that. Yeah, we come. did that on Lincoln. Maybe you can help. Uh, <coughs> do you remember the answer? Uh, are there some catch basins on the road? Um, yes. Yes, yes, and she has a drain in her driveway that Janice Bennett put in for that very reason. Yeah. So nothing does overflow her property. Yeah, they the water goes down that drain underneath and down beyond no. and beyond it. They, they overflow. They they don't. It doesn't. I've even had to like get the crowbar thing and take the covers off and dredge them myself. Yeah, yeah. It's a, town, a lot of town, work. A town drain? No, my own drains. Personal. And the how deep is right it? now how deep they is only it? go like maybe I want to say four feet, mm -hmm. and they stay filled with water. It never really leaches down yeah, yeah, and yeah. drains off. There's like one connects to the other, like. It's, it goes like this. One connects the other. Yeah, They're about yeah, four yeah. feet apart. Then this one has a uh, perforated pipe that goes mm -hmm. down and it's supposed maybe to go yeah. out. Maybe you Those have are both on your property? You have both. a lot Yeah, of because of the runoff. You have a lot of clay. On and my garage floor. flooded when I moved in. So uh, those drains don't work. A even after being dredged, they don't really work that yeah. well. A few things I can point out is the, there are trees up in this area that have to get cut for this system to be put in. The, the roots and the, the closeness of some of them. Th so there's quite a few trees that are going to have to be removed before this gets built anyway. Right, just for the system, for the place, right. the, the and then placement. And once it's done, it's all going to be seeded and loamed in grass. That, that's required mm. that all this mm. fill that goes into a septic system is loamed, seeded, and, and landscaped very nice. So. You're gonna have much less water than you do Which now be because great. now now it's all open and dirt and nothing to hold it back. But when this is done, it's gonna be a heck of a lot better so for be you being downslope than it is now. Right. You'll be much more happier if he takes the tree down all the way the, down. This, it's not a question of being happier. No, no, I'm saying uh, it, for, it, for, it, a, it, for the purpose it, it of people to be happy. So, well, <laughs> happy is not the descriptive. It's true. <laughs> uh, I would say like. You know, honestly, I would. I can assure you, I can put a million dollars if I had it to say that if they started digging, these trees would die off very quickly because yeah. the whole root, the they're enormous and it just is really scary. So you gotta completely take it out. It's an well, expense. I, I, I knew a lot of trees, and the owner. We yeah. we all knew a lot yeah. of trees yeah. have to come out for the system to right. fit. Right. It's so no doubt about it. So yeah, might even I might even be transferring this benchmark yeah, to yeah. a different place and having that come up because that is so close to both the boundary and right. and the fell. So um, yeah, I think a lot of trees are coming out anyways, and like I said, it will be landscaped and maybe increase the size of the swale. Is that an uh, option? That, uh, that can that be that definitely an option. Yeah. Instead of to put eight, eighteen inches, once you go a little deeper, because if you do have clay, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you got to get right down to the base, get yeah, a good amount of yeah. stone in it. And yeah, the clay will not, that's why you have a problem. You have yeah. clay under the four feet. Yeah. If you had nice gra gravel underneath, the water would penetrate and would be gone. Yeah, like is, does it have to be this way? Can it be like, uh, sort of like a perimeter trenching that you do? So it's like... Oh, it could be longer. I know there's a shed here that's not shown, so I just have to, you know, figure out where, or if, if, if we can get permission to have it go into the... The road the drain by uh, um, Public Works Highway Department. I think you. That I, might, that I would advise be good. you to get in touch with uh, Clay. I think he's going to retire pretty soon. But anyway, the water department it should go. With Jimmy, Jimmy Klein. Jim Klein. Yeah, he's going to retire pretty yeah, soon. It's a five hundred dollar bond, and then just yeah. do the work. And you can see if you can but talk to him. You know, something like that. Like, that's worth looking into, and right, right. you know, put out like a nice hole that will go into it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. like. I, I, I know you all um, do your jobs with the engineering of this, but um, I was afraid of these trees before 
any of this was proposed. I mean, they're just mm -hmm. they're big, they're, they're big gigantic, trees. they're big trees. <laughs> so, no doubt. and and mm -hmm. then it says like, you know, in reading structural barriers like concrete foundations, streets, swim pools, anything <coughs> downhill from an oak tree, will dam the water, forcing it into the root zone, and can is is just going to impede the tree and cause its death. So, can, can you get together and identify the trees and then include that on your plan, so that we have a commitment to? You can come to an agreement, and then there's a commitment. Yeah, I mean, I, I could show definitely where a lot of them have to be cut. And what she said, it can go both ways with that, too. Also, the roots for the trees, when, when the leaves are out, are taking up a heck of a lot of water, too. So mm -hmm. by cutting everything, that's going to make more water go into your property. And it, if you look at it from a different standpoint. so If you get everything out. Yeah, it's right, nothing to soak up the ground. So. We should probably but read but this line. But we do know yeah. a lot of trees have to have to be removed as it is, and some fence too. I have another question about the does the treatment tank design. Will that change the the grade at all? It or wouldn't on this one. With when using treatment, you can ask for things to be low to the water table, but with the depth that we had in those testers, I would not want to have it any lower. Mm -hmm. So okay. the quick answer is yes, we could, but. I don't really want them. I want to have it the same size, shape, and height. So we've got an, another abutter. Do you want to read that in? Sure. We have a letter from the abutter. This is um, from Jacqueline Guthrie of 22 Long Lake Road. Um, Board of Health, I have reviewed the proposed variance request for the above reference property, and I have a couple of questions slash concerns. Is the soil reduction request a good idea as the property is in the Long Lake area and the system is close to three property lines? There does not appear to be any wall around potential drainage field area. Is that okay? My other concern is with the existing fence and large old trees which are along the property line between my property 22 and number 24, but which all belong to that property. Will the digging excavation of the grounds be affecting the old large trees slash roots, etc., of those trees? There are large limbs, etc., which now fall from the trees as they stand now. I do not have any issue with a septic system being installed, but have the above concerns. Respectfully, mm -hmm. Jacqueline Guthrie, trustee uh, yeah. Guthrie Trust. Yeah, I can answer some of those questions. Um, on the plan, you can see the existing fence line, and that's not where the boundary is. The boundary is further up, and this the whole length of it is lined with a lot of trees. And are th those are mostly hemlocks, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and to put this system in, they'll have to take this fence down just to get trucks and mm -hmm. some of the equipment between the house and, and there. So right. With the fence, you, could, you would never fit. You wouldn't be able to get these tanks and the pump or some of the uh, stone. And as it is, it's going to be a challenge to get it in, but it can be done. But the trees were all planted on stain on this upper line. There's no reason to cut them. They're, they're right on the boundary. Um, I believe they're all on my client, Barbara's boundary, but as you know, the limbs and everything else are going mm. over to the... Uh, so the equipment district. will fit in between trees? Or it will, yeah. It will fit between this house a, a and... A a a a it's... The backhoe got in there with no problem with the fence. The, the fence is only eight feet away. But once that's gone, then we've got about 13 feet, mm -hmm. 14 feet. So it's... So those those are planted on stain. And did you? Um, one of the requirements of the board is to have a, a PLS. Um, yeah. Do the, the property boundaries? Is that have you got a PLS yeah, stamp I can, on here? I don't on the plan, but I can show you some paperwork that I do have that. Okay, um, so you've had a, a land surveyor, a PLS. Um, on. There was three uh, boundaries on this shown with someone else's stamp, and I got. I'll show you what I have. Will that work? I just wanted to make sure since they were so tight that it was, very good. it was done right. <coughs> I'm 
Yeah, this is an actual survey that would be for the woman that was just talking, her land. It's got the survey stamp, Jim Gill. And what it showed is a granite bound right here. Did you this boundary, that? yes, yeah, I have a picture okay. of it I brought with right. me. So basically, this entire lot that I'm working on is all shown on this plan, three sides of it. The only thing I had to verify is from here, 75 feet and straight up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So between that stamp and, and all that, I, it was very comfortable. And the, the granite bound was right in the corner there, and I showed on the plan. So I do know the regulation you're talking about, and that I think between that and we do have a um, yeah, we we'll just know, try to the, be the careful old plan with we have um, had some that have yeah. gone in on other people's <laughs> yeah. Now, a lot of due diligence in finding that has made, made me feel comfortable for knowing that the boundaries are accurate. So, the, the other thing is, um, Jim is asking for a um, treatment tank. It sounds like the trees are a huge issue on both sides of the property between both abutters. So for abutters, yeah. Mm. Did, as you read the letter, does the upper abutter seem like she wants the trees to stay? I couldn't. Is tell. that how you? I, 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 I know. Like, she didn't really say. Know? Yeah, she actually came in and um, tried to look at the at the um, plan a little bigger than she could on on mm -hmm. her own paperwork, and she yeah. said. You know, she just was concerned that the digging was going to be right next to the trees. Is she okay if the trees come down? Or she's fine down? if they come down or okay. if they stay up, she just... Yeah, I don't see a reason why the trees on her side are going to get affected at all. You know, the fence will come down and maybe a little bit of limbing on, on Barbara's side, you know, so um, my clients, but just to get the truck in. But other than that, those trees can stay. On the tree side, if, if they... If you, if they indicate which trees are coming down and included on their plan, does that meet, would that make you more comfortable? Uh, d definitely. Okay. Yeah. And then the other one was the drainage runoff, and you were going to try to improve the, um, make the drainage a little bit or, 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 yeah, it could or attached to the town. Could look into that, definitely. And, or attached to the yeah. town. Okay. And then the third thing, I think, is the um, treatment tank. I don't know if anybody else has any comments on that. Those are my three comments. Yeah. yeah. Jim's looking for that. I don't see any reason we should go against it. His recommendation is given the concerns of the abutter and at the location and the, you know, the tightness. The location of the lake. Yeah. The size of the lot. The yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, with the treatment, I mean, the two other things I'm totally in agreement with, but that treatment really bothers me as far as... Um, I feel it's going to be a financial hardship to the homeowner to have to pay that kind of money. And when we have five feet of fill on one side and seven feet on the other under that system, I, I, I don't see really... It's only 25 inches, though. Well, it's 25, what we found natural, natural occurring. Right. And by the time it's all put together... Have ledge. Yeah. By the time it's all put together, it's going to have that five feet and seven feet. For it to get through, it's going to be man-made, but it's, it's still there, and it's it's going to do a good job of, of treatment. So, um, I'd like to reconsider the treatment, please. Can I ask a question? Stay here. Yeah. My name is Jane Colombo, <coughs> and. I was just wondering, did this not just, did it not pass the perk test? No, it passed. So I'm, I'm a little confused about why it would, the treatment plan pass on what the, if it passed perk test, isn't that what the perk test, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, isn't that what that's for? To show that it is feasible? 
But she's concerned about the tree because... No, I'm not talking about oh, the no, tree. She's talking about the treatment. I'm talking about the treatment, the treatment, the treatment, the yeah. treatment part. So they're at, um, it doesn't meet Title no. V local regulations, and for upgrades, the, the board likes to work with people and provide variances. So, so when we provide variances or approve variances, we look at, um, we have to make a decision based on a lot of different factors. Should so it's no not problem. just the perk test. So there are lots of factors on this site. And that's what we have a, um, you know, a sanitarian who works for the Neshoba Board of Health who helps us with that and gives us, um, especially on, on sites like this, gives us recommendations. And the agent has no problem with it? No, the, well, does, the agent yeah. wants a treatment tank. I'm saying she, yeah. the um, agent I, I think changes she, that. She's talking about it's the depth of the soil, though. Like, it perks, but it's not deep enough because they hit ledge. Because there's ledge on the property. There's ledge. Right. But I thought that's what the bringing the more this in what, and... That's what I mentioned. So it's yeah. going to be naturally so occurring. If you design crew, it, then it will have no that's issue. That's what yeah. I was missing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically the regulation says a minimum of four feet of naturally occurring pervious soil can below the entire soil absorption. But then it goes on to saying if you can't get the four, as long as you get at least two feet, if you're not adding bedrooms and if it's a upgrade of the system. So with the ledge and the high water, I think we're all thinking about a treatment plan. Yeah, the yeah. location near the lake. And Jim's opinions. Yeah. 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 Uh, can I just ask a quick stupid question on the homeowner? So I really would like to know. It isn't a stupid question. Mm -hmm. Well, I just have a question then. Um, for over 50 years, the existing system was fine. Never an issue. Ever. Ever. So why is all of a sudden everything so different when there's no change really as far as two people are going to live there, two people did live there? Uh, I don't, I'm a little confused. Why is such an issue when there's never been an issue with the system that's there? I know it has to be replaced because of the Title V, but I'm, I'm confused why all the extra, the ledge has been there forever. I'm sure there's ledge all around all the houses that have had the septic done over because of septic, the Title V. But uh, I'm a little confused why it's become a complete issue. It's going to be a hardship on me. I'm a widow, or I, I just, I'm having, I'm, I don't have a lot of money, and the people that are buying it don't. I mean, I could actually lose the sale of the house. It's a hardship financially and emotionally. It's been going on for months. Um, I, I'm just a little, I just would like to get this going without spending $50,000, especially where I only paid $28,000 for the house when I bought it. I mean, yeah. it's becoming to me a, a lot yeah. of money issues. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's never done, there's never been an issue with that septic system ever. Can I speak? Yes. Yeah, and I know that you, you have you to have a walk. Can you say your name for the record? Oh, uh, John Masson. And Hi, Gino. And your address. <laughs> Paolo Paisano. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, it's it's just, been, she's already spent $4,000, and all she has is two holes in her, in her ground. And we, you, it's, it's one barrier after another. <coughs> what, what was this? I know we have to have laws. Uh, you know, doing this, doing that. I, but God Almighty, this, this has got to end sometime without us going bankrupt. <clears throat> and I know you have, you folks have to do, but you're looking out for the the rest of the people in town. But I mean, that's all it is. And uh, and also, thank you. every person that bought houses on each side of my property knew those trees were there. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry they've become a big issue to everybody for some reason, but. I, I just, um, just to say, having owned six or seven homes in my life, um, things get antiquated. So we used to have an old cesspool where everything just went into a hole in the ground and things get, as we go, there's improvements in electrical code, plumbing code, septic systems, everything gets improved as we go. Um, the fact of the matter is, I appreciate um, 
that things are getting, there's more watchdogs watching out for everybody. Um, I spent $200,000 on my home on Long Lake Road. So you can imagine my fright if one of those trees dies off and lands on my roof while I'm inside of it. I, it's only a ranch, it's not even a colonial where I have half a chance. It would croak the entire house and I just, I'm, I'm here in a spirit of cooperation because I've actually owned a lot of homes, I've had to sell a lot of homes. It's stressful, but everybody's interest is involved and that's why we're all here. Everybody's interest, not just yours, mine too, and whoever is at 22. So um, I don't want to be a thorn in anybody's side, I just want it done right. Because she's moving on, I'm staying, you know, and it has to be done right. Um, that's all I have to say. Ain't that the truth. <laughs> so, um, it killed me when I moved in. I spent $2,000 that I didn't have just to prune the limbs back because nobody ever did anything. Nobody did anything to like prune the trees back or take care of things. There's, there's no lawn over there. Like, the whole street has grass. No, there's no grass at 24 Long Lake Road, and I'm sorry, like, that's just unacceptable and um, I'm hoping it will get better. If the system goes in, then things will get better, not it, worse. It will get better. Did you have? My name's Gil Willett and I do have a question. If the trees that the Shane lady's talking about happen to be on her property, is she going to be willing to take them down? I, my whole system is upgraded already and that was an expense to the previous owner. But no, I'm saying but I, if they start if they're on your property. But but the whole system is the digging is all happening on their side. So am I supposed to assume the expense another like five thousand dollars so yes. my neighbor can put their septic system in? Well the the um the trees are a safety issue associated with the excavation of the septic system. So um let if we don't know which side the trees are on, let's not talk about that here because that's an unknown. So okay. if we could just go forward, and um, the, we, we've come to an agreement, hopefully, that you'd be able to work out something with the trees indicated on the plan, same thing with the drainage runoff. And then um, I think the board is in agreement that um, we would require a treatment tank. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. Gina? According to the agent, yeah, he recommended. Yeah. Is there any way you can do that? So we'd like to have you go back to the drawing board and then come back and then I think we can continue this, is that correct? We can continue the hearing. Okay, so you want me to bring a plan and show show a lot of the trees, number one, show more drainage, looking yeah. to going into the road or doing a right. um, more detailed, bigger, and looks like there's no choice but treatment. Yeah. And you can talk to Jim some more about it if you want. Yeah, he, at this point. he told me already. So. Yeah. So and on the I trees, I wasn't blindsided. He did tell yeah. me. Yeah. So on nice the trees, you'll just have to indicate which ones are coming down, so that okay. there's a commitment on the plan. Okay. Does that sound? Anybody else have any comments on that? No. No. Good. So it'll be what continued for two weeks from today or something? Is that right? right? All right. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I'll go back Appreciate to the drawing it. board and see you in two weeks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank in. Yeah, I appreciate everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, make, uh, a make a motion. Make a motion. Make a motion to continue the meeting for two more weeks. Can we discuss the twenty-four long road? Twenty-four long road. Need a second. Second. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, how do we do? I. How do we do? I'll oppose. Are we all in agreement? Everybody yes. said aye. 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 Janet, yes, and you'll find the agenda. It will be on the website and you can see the time. Okay. It'll be posted the much. Friday before the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. We don't want bedtime reading. Does she want her other copies? Yeah, she could take one. For next time. <laughs> That's her copy? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Well, this one I was going to bring it out to you. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. Uh, the next one is the um, K Estate Subdivision. And. This is a discussion. This isn't. So we're just listening here. Yeah, so for the record, Brian Goodrew with Hancock Associates. Um, if you recall, back in 2015, uh, we were uh, before this board with respect to the Durkee Farm Estates subdivision, and essentially what we had requested was a waiver from um, the local regulation of fill within 10 feet of a property line. Essentially, the way that, that Durkee Farm Estates was developed is the houses went in and spec, and all the yards were graded at the same time. So from our perspective, while there's fill at the, the lot line, it created a uniform front yard and streetscape. And essentially what we're now doing with uh, K Estates is the same thing. Um, I don't know if, if anyone's been out there uh, recently, no. but this is phase one, this is Fur Lane. These three uh, lots um, have been designed and submitted to Jim, uh, as well as this board. And essentially, we're, we're, we're seeking that same kind of that waiver because the idea is to, again, put septic systems in the front yards and kind of create a, a uniform streetscape throughout the subdivision. How um, many houses are going to have that? So there's, there, there's three in phase one, and then there's 20 um, in On subsequent phases. Side. Exactly, yep. And this was fully permitted with um, the planning board, and we're currently before conservation. Phase one has uh, had an order of conditions issued, and we're in discussion with the, the balance of the project, essentially. Um, with that said. Grimes? Do they get access on Grimes, or how are they? Uh, so it's actually off the new roads. So uh, Fur is off of uh, Frazier Street, uh -huh. and then uh, what's called Red Cedar Way to Douglas to Cypress is off of Spruce Street. So uh, no connection in K uh, to Grimes itself. Mm -hmm. It's all off of Foster Street and the oh, new okay. roads. So not that old barn that's on Grimes. It's totally on the other side. Total, yeah, it's okay. that's lot one. That's um, actually a, a kind of a deal was made with the planning board to um, preserve the barn and, and kind of rework that lot mm -hmm. and, sure and uh, make it an affordable um, okay. unit. And that was and part what of are the, are these? Um, single-family homes would they are, it's not going to be affordable, I assume. Yep. Yeah. Um, so these are these are market rate homes, um, yeah. and they are so fully conforming. Three bedroom each. I'm sorry. They are three bedroom each. Four bedroom. How big are the lots? Uh, Forty thousand square feet. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's a fully um, conforming subdivision. So basically, uh -huh. that they'll be greater than 20 <coughs> feet between the septic the systems correct it's just that you want to fill you just, you just want to fill so that's exactly exactly so it's got to do with the fill really not the system spacing correct yeah yeah it's a little bit of a different um situation with k than Durkee because Durkee was an open space so those lots were 15 to 20 thousand square feet whereas these are are um, conventional so they're full acres and up we need so we have the room we need to fill easements yeah, so uh, actually, uh, Jim is in receipt of the recorded fill easements. They've, um, uh, our attorney has, has recorded them at the Registry of Deeds, and we can certainly get the board copies of that additionally if you, if you would like. Okay. Any questions? 2015, I wasn't on the board. Were you on the board? A couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, Do you I, remember? I, no, but I've seen him. Um, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, want me to read the read what Jim said? Um, this is supposed to be a discussion. Just so a discussion. I'm actually so surprised even. he even has anything. Mm. Uh, I guess we could. Yeah, we could. Can we make a decision yeah. tonight? No. Or? No. Okay. So you could read it. Yeah. So okay, K Estate Subdivision Hancock Associates. This is an extension of the Durkee Farm subdivision and the lots in the extension, like the lots in Durkee Farm, are going to be filled together as they build the houses. The engineer has designed these lots to integrate the site grading and the fill for the septic systems between the lots to avoid surface runoff issues. The fill for the septic system will be within 10 feet of lot lines, and thus the lots will require variances to your regulations. With the Durkee Farm subdivision, the board granted the variances for the entire development with the understanding that the lots would be graded together to avoid surface runoff. 
issue to avoid the surface runoff issue. Yeah, Same thing is problem. proposed for the K estates. I do not have a problem with their request. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if no one else has any questions or comments, I guess we can close the discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next um, is a public hearing for Six Cottage Way, Christine Kazokas. Make sure they everybody sign in. Yeah, did, oh, that's a good one, Jeanette, thank you. Um, did everyone sign in at the door? There's a sign-in sheet. Did you do that? Okay. Okay. Hello. Uh, oh, thank you. We can sit together later. Right? Okay. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Do you guys need page one as well? Do you have a good extra? Always look for the stamp. Do you have two? Eight, eight, fourteen. Mm -hmm. This is this is about the right one. This is the right one. Yeah, I'm with it. The right one is pretty. Do you guys, this is good still. Thank you. You could say your names for the oh. record. I'm Kristen Kazokis. This is my attorney, Adam Costa, and my other attorney, Cheryl Gould. Hi. Why don't you get a third one? <laughs> <laughs> you can play five. And, um, <laughs> and um, Brian is also here um, as a, um, for re engineering representative okay. as well. And is Brian Badger, is he still in the hallway? Um, he, yes, he is. Okay, that's fine. He's the installer, so he'll okay. step yeah. back in, I think. So yeah. may we? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, again, I'm Adam Costa. I'm with the firm of Mead, Tallerman & Costa with an office in Newburyport and an office in Millis. Uh, we've been involved um, in representing Kristen for, I guess, the better part of about a year now. Uh, not so much involved in the, in the Title V or uh, Board of Health proceedings, but we've been involved in a number of matters that have proceeded beyond the Conservation Commission to the DEP, to the OADR, which is a division of the DEP that handles administrative appeals, and to Superior Court handling uh, um, appeals in each of those forums relative to the order of conditions that issued under the local wetlands bylaw and under the Wetlands Protection Act. And so we are before you tonight um, with sort of a, a dual request. I think this was probably communicated to all of you. Um, the first is something that I think is probably a bit unique for you, but I don't think it's unreasonable in the circumstances, and I know there's some precedent for it. Uh, and that is not so much applying for a new permit, but asking that you acknowledge that the existing permit is still in effect. And I understand that that is an unusual request in the sense that um, we have unusual circumstances here. Um, the, the regulations provide for a three-year term on a septic permit. They provide an opportunity for the recipient of a permit to seek one one-year extension for a total term of four years. There have been circumstances where applicants uh, apply for and receive septic permits but are unable to use those permits. Um, the, the case law refers to the reasons why they cannot use these permits as practical impediments to use of the permit. In most cases, and there's not a whole lot of case law out there because most cases don't make it to the courts, but uh, usually those real practical impediments are lawsuits. Uh, not lawsuits initiated by the applicant, because if the applicant wants to sue, then it's on them if it delays their project, but lawsuits that are uh, initiated by third parties generally, by neighbors, by abutters, interested persons who challenge permits and approvals, not even necessarily the permit or approval in question, because in that case it would automatically be told while the litigation's underway, but other permits or approvals that are required for the same project to proceed. So a very simple example would be you've got construction of a new single family home, uh, you've got wetlands issues, you need a Title V system, you need certain zoning relief, you're able to get your wetlands approval, uh, you're able to get your, your Title V approval, but you can't get your zoning relief. Well, there is grounds, and again, courts have ruled on this issue, 
for what they call equitable tolling to determine that in those instances, the permits and approvals that have issued are essentially stayed while the litigation's underway because how can they possibly be used? Doesn't apply in every circumstance. Again, the courts have looked at it on a case by case basis as boards have done the same thing and said, well, was it really a practical impediment or could you have proceeded if you wanted to? And you have to sort of weigh all the facts in any given circumstance. I think the facts in these circumstances work to our favor. Um, this is a, a case where a Title V permit was issued from this board. Um, there was an effort uh, shortly thereafter to seek an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. This is not a sizable project. It's not a project of substantial scope. It's a what I would refer to, at least in, in my world, because I work on many much larger projects, um, a relatively modest project, a small expansion and renovation of an existing cottage, uh, a realignment, uh, relocation to some extent of a, a driveway providing access to that cottage, and then of course the installation of a septic system to replace the, the outhouse that currently exists on the site. Um, but it did require an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. Um, to Kristen's benefit, she very efficiently made application for that permit, got that permit. Um, there was a, an appeal um, by uh, neighbors, um, one, one neighbor in particular, to the um, DEP. DEP affirmed and issued a superseding order of conditions, confirming that your, your Conservation Commission was right in issuing that permit, and that was further appealed. And it's challenging, you may all know this, with orders of conditions because your Conservation Commission serves in a dual role, because they're acting to enforce their local bylaw, but also the state act. Even though they issue one order of conditions, the appeal route is bifurcated. You have to file an appeal with DEP and then with OADR and prosecute that with respect to the State Wetlands Protection Act. But then you also have to file an appeal under the local bylaw of the same order to Superior Court. So you're fighting the fight on both fronts simultaneously and you have to win both as an applicant in order to proceed with the project. And that's what we've been involved in for um, the better part of well, over a year at this yeah. point. So we, uh, we saw it. I wasn't involved, but Kristen sought an extension of this permit for one year, hoping that we'd be able to get through the process. But um, unfortunately, we don't control that process. The courts do. And uh, I can tell you firsthand that the courts don't move quickly. So um, I provided for you or prepared for you, and I'm happy to provide um, just a quick handout because I understand that this is a number of copies there. I understand this is a, a bit of an unusual request, and it's only the first part of our request, but this just talks about you know, the case law that exists, the couple of cases that talk about the fact that you as a board have the authority to apply this concept of equitable tolling. You can look at all the facts and circumstances and say, you know what, this permit is still in effect. You couldn't have practically utilized the permit. Uh, how could we have expected that you know, two years ago you were going to be out there installing a septic system for a cottage expansion that might never happen? Um, and for a cottage that you could never um, access by way of a, a relocated uh, year-round driveway. So that's the request we've made. You can see the cases that exist. You can see the definition of equitable tolling, which I just pulled right out of the law dictionary. Um, not not uh, too difficult to research, but I hope that you'll give some consideration to, to that request. Um, out of an abundance... Can I, can I ask one question? Of course. I'm sorry. No. I'm really confused because I thought you were coming in because we don't have a letter ask, saying what you're asking for. And then, oh, we do, okay. And then it says, uh, Jim saying permit has expired and the applicant has reapplied to obtain a new permit for the site. Yes. So I, I thought, and I think all of us thought you were yeah. coming in on a new permit. And that's the... So I'm really confused. Yes. Yeah, because, because we had this discussion well, last time, so... It's mm -hmm. almost maybe like, I should let you finish. I, I don't know. Well, it was almost a, I thought a, a continuation of that discussion because there was the whole thing that you needed to we um, to talk with le legal counsel. Yeah. and which was done. Right. And legal counsel directed us to DEP, and DEP is in the process still of reviewing it. And Adam is here to keep open that whole discussion from last meeting in case he's correct and DEP is correct. And so we're not we're not leaving here saying that we consent to the fact that the tolling didn't happen. But simultaneously, we're also applying for Okay, great. Thank right. you. And I was just about to Got transition. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just, I couldn't no, no, okay. process what you were saying because they didn't have context. So I didn't it, it's fair. So we've been in okay. contact with the EP. Um, Sherry has spoken to them. They did not close the door in this concept of equitable tolling um, by any means. Um, so we wanted to preserve the argument and, and make that to you. But we recognize that you had directed us to file a new application. So we've done that. Um, so the new application that's before you is uh, not all that different from the original application that was before you. Correct. Um, because the expires. Are these the same drawings? That's, that yeah. that's correct. It's not her fault. Right. 
So the other one expired. Um, we made application before the expiration date um, of the four year because we'd already gotten the one one year extension. Uh, so we're before you with the same request. We've submitted the same plans that we have submitted previously. Um, again, I'm not going to even attempt to speak to uh, the technicalities of <laughs> installation or design of septic systems. That's why the experts are here and you can ask your questions of them. But we are seeking the same relief. We're seeking the same variance as we saw mm -hmm. previously. We're seeking, um, we're, again, we're pursuing the same plans that we had provided to you previously. Um, there have been no substantial changes to the site. Um, I suspect, I know we have some neighborhood support here. I also know that um, those neighbors who are in opposition are also present, and I suspect that they'll want to speak as well as they're entitled to. Um, I suspect that they may raise, and I would like to reserve the opportunity to address it, but I'll address it briefly now. They may raise some of the issues that have come before um, the, the OADR, and which may be before the Superior Court, that relate to matters that are within the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, for example, uh, one issue is that in the course of the proceedings before OADR, uh, it was determined that it might make some sense to um, delineate the actual edge of pond. So previously, uh, we had an edge of pond uh, identified on the plans, but that had not been delineated. There was also a seep that was located in proximity to that edge of pond that was delineated as well. Um, and so that new delineation has made its way to OADR. Um, that delineation, and we have drawings here that we're happy to show you that show where that is, it has no substantive effect on your jurisdiction or the matters that are before you or the septic system itself. Um, there have really been no other changes to the plan with respect to what is currently before um, OADR or the Superior Court. Uh, we're still proposing the system in substantially the same location, uh, still proposing the uh, relocation of the, the driveway from Shag Bark down to the location of the cottage site in substantially the same location as it was going to be in before. Um, work has commenced on, on the project just recently, um, aware of the upcoming deadline. Kristen can speak to that because she's been out on the site, uh, I guess, almost on a daily basis. Um, witnessing that work as it's been ongoing, and so she can speak to what's occurred there of late. And um, do you want to speak to where, where you are in the process? Um, I was told by DEP that I could um, move forward with work that's outside the 100 foot buffer, right. and so I installed my um, well and I also installed my subject tanks. Wait. On the well um, on the plan is to the right of the cottage, Where and it says w? yeah. Oh, okay. And during the um, when I filed my NOI, I actually um, moved the location of the well outside the 100 foot buffer. Um, the conservation and DEP approved both locations of the well, um, one outside the 100, one outside the buffer, which is not in their jurisdiction but the other one inside the buffer, um, because if I was not able to get a successful well outside the buffer, I wanted to preserve the option of um, drilling the well inside the buffer. Um, I how was many feet between, how many feet? How many feet between? The two, the two locations. Two locations. Um, not, not that far. Um, Jim, uh, I actually had an engineered plan that showed the new location of the well. So when I filed my well permit, right. um, Jim had an engineered plan of that location to make sure that it was 100 feet from the leaching field right. and 50 feet from the That's um, what I thought, yeah. okay. from the tanks and 50 feet from the property line and 25 feet from the cottage. <laughs> so Otherwise, 100 feet away from the leach field. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. so when does your permit, your current permit, expire? My current permit was issued in September um, 16th, 2014. September 16th. Mm -hmm. September 16th, okay. Okay. And um, Jim actually came out on the 13th um, to inspect the tanks um, and then the distance um, to verify the distance from the well to the tanks to make sure that that met the setback and gave permission to Brian to backfill the tanks. You had the letter from the attorney when they had a discussion. You have it with you? No. No. Yeah, there's no, uh, no letter. There's no letter. There's, there's um, so they had a conversation, they had a telephone conversation. You had a conversation with the attorney. So tell me exactly, no candy, tell me exactly what <laughs> the attorney said to you. <laughs> the attorney said that he could not find anything in the regulations that automatically allows a second extension after the one year extension is up. He also found nothing that said there was no such ability to get a tolling of the statute of limitations 
but he could not um, give that opinion to this board that DEP would have to give it, and I should go to DEP. He instructed me to call Dave Boyer. Uh, yes. Is his name? Yes. I called Dave Boyer two times a day, every single day for seven days with no callback. He's always called like several that. people who know him to ask if there was a way to get through to him. And finally, on the seventh day, I reached Ian Blackman, who's the attorney for DEP. That was yesterday morning. Yeah, yeah. Ann Blackman and I had a lengthy conversation. She also said that there was nothing that uh, that would go against the tolling argument, but that she would take it to the superiors, I imagine that means Dave Boyer, and right. DEP upon my writing a letter. Right. Adam and I spoke today, and the letter has to be very detailed in the sense that he has all the information about the appeal process because he's representing the applicant on that. And right. so rather than try to rush a letter yesterday, knowing I wasn't going to get an answer from DEP in one day, no. um, we decided to come here together tonight to represent that our next move to DEP on that issue right. is going to be a lengthy letter explaining exactly why the appeals process is taking the time that it's taking and what's involved. So, so as I said, we don't want to close the door and say this permit has expired or lapsed. Right. Neither do we want to put you in a position of having to make that decision without a formal hearing, reading, excuse me, reading from DEP and thus from council. Council said if DEP sends the letter, he'll send you a letter. Mm -hmm. So we're at that point. But I think that the new application should also be approved. I think it would be all the, m I mean, there's no reason not to to vote the variance and, and approve the new request tonight. And that's one more um, argument to DEP that there's no reason not to let the system go forward. It's been allowed by the Board of Health under the local regs two times with the one variance voted. Do you understand, Board, what she, had, what she said? Mm -hmm. All right. We would like to have the letter. As soon as you receive it, we should, we should have it. Okay? And uh, I understand that. I understand your pain. Thank you. Okay? And I'm sorry this happened. I don't think you really need to have an extra attorney. You could have given us uh, the town of Littleton a donation, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But he seemed to be very, you know what he's talking about. And I was not trying to avoid him. I was trying to figure it out because our agent, he has no problem with it. We, we thought it appropriate that I be here, yeah. not because she needs a second that's, attorney, that's fine. but only because I'm familiar with the underlying litigation. I appreciate you came in, you know, and then goals she's respecting I'm sure she so, respect them so we have um, we've got some written input and then we have people who want to speak in the room sure but I wanted yeah. to make sure that you had gone through your whole spiel and your request yeah so we what what we'd like to hear too after you give us all the background is exactly what you're looking for sure um, so what the um, question is we have to answer sure um, so uh, we've concluded our presentation, but I understand that there may be issues that are raised by neighbors, abutters, other interested parties in support or in opposition to this, and we'd obviously like the opportunity to respond if there are issues raised that we're not anticipating. So have you um, submitted in writing what you're requesting right now? We have submitted the application for approval of the system on the same terms and conditions as what was approved by this board back in 2014. And that's what you're asking us for? That's correct. Okay. So Jim has comments too. Yes. Yeah, so maybe it, we have maybe better asked by the designer. Are you the des are you designing too? Well, let's go through the, the questions, and then I've got something from Conchon too. Okay. So um, the first one is from it Ryan Bettitz. Bettitz. Sorry, dear Board of Health, thank you for your service to the town of Littleton. That's nice. I wanted to voice my support for anything that can help get a new septic system for Christian's Land if Shack, Shack Bark Drive Cottage Way. As a neighbor and user of Fort Pond, I really appreciate anything that can help keep Fort Pond clean. I feel strongly that Fort Pond has too many old systems and or outhouses being used by homes on Fort Pond. Again, thank you for your services to the town and I hope you help get a new septic system at this property. Thank you, Ryan Batez. Somebody want to read the Willis one? Sure. Um, to whom it may concern, we have been Littleton residents for 39 years. We have a home on Fort Pond Road in Littleton and a cottage on Fort Pond. Our neighbors at the pond were are the Whit Peter Whitcomb family and the Leonard uh, Godfrey family. Christian Kajokis 
is the niece of these families who now owns the Godfrey Cottage and land. We have found Kristen to be a hard worker and a good steward of the environment and the pond. Kristen is the owner and operator of a small landscape business in Littleton whose focus is on the use of environmentally sensitive tools for the development of gardens and woodlands. We are pleased to have Kristen as a neighbor. Should you have any questions about Kristen or her activities on the pond, please feel free to ask respectfully James and Barbara Wills. Um, this is quick. So, uh, from Peter Tropiano, as a butters at Five Cottage Way, we are not opposed to the variance that Ms. Kazokis is requesting for six Cottage Way properties. Sincerely, Peter and Jean Tropiano. I think those are the letters, right? And then I, um, since I have it here, I'm just going to read something from the CONCOM because I think what we're going to be hearing going forward from some of the abutters is about, I think it's focused on wetlands. So we don't, we don't delineate wetlands here. That's CONCOM and it's at DEP. But so I asked that on CONCOM give us too. the information that we needed to make our determination. So what they're saying is that attached is a portion of the plan that was approved by Conservation Commission. Order of conditions is attached. The wetlands line on their plan is the same as on the Board of Health plan, currently up for consideration, which is what we needed to know, I think. This order has been appealed to DEP, no res resolution yet. There is a challenge to the Littleton Wetlands bylaw not yet resolved. And I have to say, this isn't signed. So who did this come from? Jim. Graffy. From Jim Graffy. I think it, in, um, it's got attachments from Amy Green. So um, if anybody on the board wants to um, read that. And then um, who in the, the room would like to speak? I would. I'm uh, Ken McDonald, 42 Shad Bar Drive. I'm um, uh, Would it be OK if I just let up to the table? Go ahead. Sure. sure. Thank you. Hi, Adam. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. Um, so just to cover a couple things, I guess I'll start with a question. Um, I'm a little confused in terms of really what the ask is here tonight uh, by the applicant because uh, it sounds like in what I was expecting and I think what the board was expecting was uh, the request for a new application and variance. But I'm also now hearing that they would like to have the existing or the now expired permit uh, extended. I yeah, I asked that question very directly so that that would be clear. Yeah. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I th the what I heard was a request tonight is you have a um, application in for a permit, and we're going to act on that permit application. Okay. So I guess the question I have is why bring up uh, the extension of an old permit if the action for tonight is to act upon a new permit? Because that's the way she began with, with the you old permit. You can ask them if you want. I you know, I, I, that's I'm not going to. We then. We then everybody's allowed to say their thing, ah, and um, we, then we act on the question. Okay. So just to, to clarify one point on the request for extending the old permit, uh, one point of clarification is that the um, uh, the original permit was issued uh, in 2014. And expired. And expired. No, I, exactly. Um, I think what's important to understand here, because Adam stated that the applicant, as soon as the permit was issued, acted right away to try to get an NOI, which is not true. Uh, the applicant uh, submitted for an NOI uh, two years and nine months after the application, uh, the permit was granted. So the NOI, you'll, if you can look through the records, was actually submitted in uh, 2017. So we're not CONCOM? So that's not, right. we're I not I just want to clarify that for the transcript. Yeah, we're not going to be dealing with it. That would be CONCOM and DEP. Yeah, okay. I just want to clarify that. That's all. Okay. There was a, no, a kind of a misstatement there. Um, so my concern, uh, I actually have two concerns with the, um, the application. Uh, one is a more of a procedural one that I'll cover. Uh, but the, the bigger and the second issue is the fact that, uh, and Adam uh, stated this as well, that the uh, this septic project is uh, currently under appeal with the, um, and rests right now with the Office of Appeals and Dispute Resolution, the OADR. And um, the question of validity of the wetlands uh, is, uh, is at issue. And I think Sherry mentioned that in her conversation. She confirmed that that's still an open item. And um, the background is, is we actually, uh, back when the NOI was first submitted, we had requested uh, to uh, have a peer review of the wetlands. 
uh, fairly simple request. The commission, the transcript will show, was supportive of that request. Uh, the applicant refused access to the property to conduct that peer review. Um, so uh, we hired uh, Mickey Marcus, who's a professional wetland scientist and pretty well known and regarded. Um, he was actually uh, able to determine that from the abutting properties, uh, he was able to access more than half of the wetland flags and uh, conduct a survey. Uh, and he found three things during his survey. Uh, one was that the um, uh, wetland delineation along the stream, which is actually the point that this proposed septic system runs across, uh, was off by as much as 8 to 12 feet. <coughs> Now, the important part of this is that the septic system is just 54 feet from the stream. Uh, so it's only four feet uh, buffer between the 50-foot setback and the stream. Um, the second discovery that Mickey made was uh, an entire set of uh, wetlands that, had, uh, that was completely omitted from the 2014 plan, which is the plan that this board has been provided uh, to make a decision on. Uh, so those wetlands aren't even on the plan. Third uh, discovery that Mickey uh, made was there's a certifiable uh, vernal pool uh, that is not shown on the plan. Um, in, in submitting this uh, pre-filed testimony to the DEP, uh, the applicant subsequently uh, created a new plan uh, on August 1st of 2018 uh, that showed uh, the wetlands along the pond, but nothing more that Mickey had found. Um, so the, the wetlands themselves and kind of the application that's being requested here tonight uh, and the decision that the board is being asked to make um, is not really uh, accurate and it's not up to date uh, because the plan you have and the one that's been submitted is dated 2014. Well, we appreciate your comment. Yeah. Um it, as, as Gina said, we appreciate your comment, um, but we have to rely on CONCOM for the wetlands, which is why we have this note have from CONCOM. It doesn't have to be 100 feet. Sometimes we do give you variant up to 50 feet. Right, so we're, we're at 54 feet right now. But sometimes you have to go a little bit, sometimes. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the situation. Sure. But, but basically... <coughs> We understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. and we understand that it's in dispute, and it's with DEP. Correct. Yeah, but that's not, and CONCOM will make, will work with it within those boundaries to, to, to define the wetlands. That's not what we do. We don't define wetland boundaries. Right. So what we do is take the information that we get from CONCOM mm -hmm. and, and act on that. Right. And so I that that is procedurally that's what we're doing. Understand that procedurally, yeah. but I think it's um, I guess the point I want to make is that the information you've been provided by the wetlands um, is, by the is under commission dispute. is under dispute. Yeah, and I even know. acknowledged by Sherry by the D, her conversation with the DEP that yeah. the wetlands is in question. So, does the board feel? And I guess so. Here's my simple request. Um, this issue with the DEP, uh, the hearing is next month. It's all going to be resolved one way or another. And so my request here of the board is um, to defer a decision until that happens, because then actually you'll be dealing with accurate information, because you're not dealing with, uh, and it's already known and noted that the, the wetlands is in question. And, and I understand that. And again, we don't determine where a wetland boundary is here. So we take the information that we get from the Conservation Commission, which we have, mm -hmm. and go with that. Okay. Um, and, you know, that's all I can say. Okay. Um, so I mentioned there was, a, there was a procedural issue, and that really has to do with compliance with the Littleton Board of Health regulations. Um, my understanding, uh, based on Regulation 27, um, that the applicant must prove that enforcement of such regulation uh, would do manifest adjustment, injustice to prevent uh, her from substantially uh, all beneficial use of the subject property. And um, I'm not sure that's actually been provided here, uh, at least through the, the, the statements made by the applicant and her attorneys. Thank you. 
I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's Regulation 30 yeah. under variances. be looking for comments from other board members but I, I think um, in this case that the injustice is that there was a permit granted and um, a, a, a variance granted based on um, the board of, uh, board of Health granted it so that um, that would be basis for granting another one. But the injustice, the manifest injustice, uh, the obvious injustice, is really has to do with the variance itself, uh, which is the variance of Regulation 27, which um, requires by local uh, Board of Health regulations that no fill be placed within 10 feet of an abutting property line. Yeah. And um, so the, the burden of proof, so to speak, is with the applicant to demonstrate if, uh, if she's not provided with the ability to place fill within 10 feet of, of my property, that uh, she won't be able to, to substantially use her property and, and benefit from that. And with six acres of land uh, that the applicant owns, I, you know, squeezing this in within not just 10 feet, but actually two feet, uh, which is a pretty big gap in terms of what the regulations allow, um, I don't think is meeting the obligation of manifest injustice. Two feet? Correct. So the plan shows that oh, there would okay. be a four foot retaining cement, ports of yeah. concrete retaining wall within two feet of my property line. Okay. Does anyone else have any comments on this? We just go by what Jamie tells us. Let's read Jim's comments. Oh, yeah. that's good. Do you want to hear? That's the, that's the comment we go by. And we, uh, we follow the law too and the regulation and the variance has been granted. Okay. I have it right here. I'll read it. Oh, okay. One. Yeah. We get six one. Cottage Way. These are Jim Gareffi's comments from the Neshoba um, Agent Board of Health. Uh, the permit for the septic system has expired, and the applicant has reapplied to obtain a new permit for the site. I reviewed the plans and find they are in compliance with Title V and your regulations, except the design proposes fill within the 10 feet of the lot line and proposes the use of retaining wall and barrier to contain the fill. I don't have an issue with the request as the use of the retaining wall will allow the surface runoff from the site grading to be du directed onto the applicant's property. I would recommend the following conditions as approval of the variance and retaining wall use. Number one, the wall will be designed by a mass professional engineer and its construction certified by a mass PE. Number two, the lot lines within 50 feet of the system shall be staked by a professional land surveyor prior to construction of the system. If I could make just one additional comment. Go ahead. Um, Regulation 23B of the Board of Health uh, requires that the limits of work be delineated prior to notification of the abutters, um, and that was not done. Well, they can't get into the well lines, right? Or Excuse me? They can't get into the buffer. Are you waiting to get into that buffer area? Or yeah, they can't work into the buffer can area. Can you stake it? It, it is. It, it's the, the, the limitations of the limits of work. So essentially where the, the septic system would go, um, that, that part's not staked. So the limits of work would need to be uh, properly delineated. State. To have a complete application here yeah. present to the Board of Health. When before it goes to the, uh, yeah, so the before abutters. Before you start a leach field, you call the engineer and they come out and stake it out. Right. So will you put in some stakes around your field as soon as you can? That's around the limits of work. 
Um, but there's I, no leach field yet. It's just she hasn't field. been able to start. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. no, the limits of, of work. work so exactly that the right. abutters could see it ahead of the work. Yeah. Well, no, actually, it's it, it's for a complete application. It's pretty clear where the work. So I'm just yes, asking you: Will you yes, stake? I will state it. work. I will state it. Stake it before. Yes. Okay, but, yeah. but procedurally that requirement needs to be done before the applicant can uh, have a complete application presented to the Board of Health. You want it to do undo have, everything and do you have the limits state? Do for me. Well the there's nothing there right now, it's just words. The limits of the work the work that I've that I've done, there is a defined limit. I've got waddles set up, I've um, my boundaries of my property have been staked both um, sides. Of my property line have been staked by engineers. Okay. Yeah. The, the definition of limited work is uh, where the proposed septic subsurface distribution system would be installed. That well, needs to be properly staked. We state. appreciate your comment. I thank you for so much. I think we have a two attorney and we have uh, five board members and uh, we uh, we thank you. We'll go from here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else uh, would like to speak? Okay. Can I make a com comment, Madam Chair? Sure. Um, so I'd just like to address a couple of um, things that were said um, primarily by, by, by board members. Um, so uh, Mr. Greffey's letter, we have no issue whatsoever with respect to either of those two conditions that were proposed. Um, there's no issue having a, the retaining wall reviewed and approved, and we certainly have no issue um, staking either. Um, okay. So we'll accept both of those conditions as good. Yeah. Okay. So we are we go forward to any other comments did. from anyone? No. You're good. Any more comments? Okay. Uh, so we need a motion. Anybody have to entertain a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Approve the plan as submitted. Approve the variance uh, for the wall. Do we have the letter of the request, yeah. please? You can read it right off the letter. It'll be better. I'll make a motion to approve the request for a variance from Regulations 27 to allow the fill required for the installation of the proposed soil absorption system to serve the existing residents at Six Cottage Way to be located within 10 feet of the property line. I second it. Uh, is this your, this is the, the plan that goes with that, right. correct? Yeah. Our plan, because we're, we're actually approving a plan, so right. you want to say what? Yeah, so the dated. plan is dated. It's dated. Dated 8-8-14? Correct. Where's the plan that you submitted with your current permit application? Um, it's like 811, it's, it's this one here? This, this one here is one has a stamp. Right, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like 811. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I my application the same Sure. Yeah. 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 Just said, um, Shelly just said, we'll just use that plan. That okay, so you just need to know what plan is going with your application. Is it's it this, this one, one here? Yep, it's okay, so that's the one we're referencing. This is in the IC. It says right there, issue, revision, revision description. Revised per board. Yeah, yeah this is comments. dated 8814. Yes. That's correct. Yep, I have that. No revisions. No. Will there have to be a revision now? Will we have to see another plan when we have to um, get retaining laws? Dog. Yeah. Um, I think page two has uh, the uh, schematics for the retaining wall. Yeah, this part is just amazing. He wants to, um, he wants an engineer to design it. Right. There's a, um, yeah, he wants a, um, it's got to be designed by P. Yeah, so that you don't have to oh, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No. So that's a condition that's that'll fine. go on your yeah. permit. That'll oh, yeah. the, the permit will make sure sign we it. We'll get it to sign. Make sure It'll we be have on a copy. permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. waiting for a, a second. Yeah. Oh, um, all, in all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes. 
Thank you very much for everybody's thank participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, have one uh, final question, if I could. Yeah. You approve the variance. You didn't approve the permit. Okay. The permit would have been on the plan, so we're we're approving the permit with the variance based on that plan. plan. Yeah. So, okay. would you like us to say it again? Because we can. Well, I heard the vote was for the variance. Yeah, that's yes. and not right. including on the permit. Okay. It should reference the plan. We're approving the permit. Let's do it again because I want to do it right. Okay, so yes. you're going to reference the plan, the permit, allowing this plan with the, which includes those variances. Okay, okay. so voting, I make a motion to approve the permit based on the plan. Yeah. Right. Dated and, and grant the variance. Okay. Grant the I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Carries. Yep. So one question, Madam Chairwoman. Um, yeah. On the, um, what are my legal rights from the appeal process? I understand I have the, the ability to do that, and which means that no work can actually begin for a period of 10 yeah, days. You should go through Janet and our health agent who works in the um, Neshoba Health. Yeah, and you can talk to him. And but just to clarify for the group that, yeah. um, I guess I'm going to ask this as a question. You can tell me if my understanding is correct. Uh, that um, no work can begin on this project for a period of at least 10 days, which gives uh, uh, anyone who wants to appeal as a butter uh, the option to do so. Is that my understanding correct? I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But I'm sure she would comply with it. Is and again, the only wish you yeah, had. Consult your attorney. That is, well, um, the best the Board of Health. Right, so yeah. the Board of Health, right. So if you could go through our office and mm -hmm. then ask, we'll get the answer from our, our, our okay. sanitarian. Right. Would you comply with it 10 days? Whatever. You don't have to, okay. don't have to do it. required. Enough. Okay. I'll give you a reward. Fair enough. All right, so thank you. If you have to. If, if we're required to. Me. Yeah, you better do something. Right. Okay. If I, if I could make one other um, uh, point of clarification. So we discussed at the start this issue of equitable tolling and the verdict's out. DEP hasn't chimed in yet. We right. talked about your attorney speaking to right. us mm -hmm. following consultation with DEP. Uh, I want to be clear that if we get advice from DEP and DEP indicates that that is a viable option, you have no objection to us making a further request that you you render that determination if we're to get advice from DEP that, that that's legit. Yeah, the DEP says it's legit, not to worry. You, you yeah. have the right to come yeah. and ask us. Okay, I just want, want to be clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll ask you my question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I feel bad for you. Sometimes you come with everybody happy. Do we need to do any correspondence? Oh, yeah. Could, could you pass this to Janet? Those are my notes on the minutes. You gave it to me, right? Yeah, so we're going back to administrative matters, which is, I lost my, um, board member reports. Um, I have nothing except for the over law, mm -hmm. um, training, and the MA, and the Institute Mass Association of Board Health Board, the ethical reason I did not attend. Right. Okay. So one is the 15th and one is the 17th. Sometime it's close. Yeah. Oh, close. Good, good <laughs> yeah, crowd management, Gino. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the, what was the <coughs> MA? November what? Um, 17th, I think. Oh, well, that's a Saturday, right? Yeah. Yes. One, yeah, one's a Saturday. Oh boy. Yeah, and do, you, yeah, do you have to do you have to sign up for that or you just show do up? You have to sign up for that. I keep getting emails that so say the fifteenth is the open talk about, but nothing November. that says how to is sign it up. November or you can just go to the website. Okay. I don't think I can make it. On uh, on Thursday I'm going to the quarterly Neshoba Associated Boards um, of Health oh, good. meeting. Oh good. Um at seven o'clock. A night. Uh, yeah, they sent me a notice and um, good. there was some things I had no idea. No, it's, it's, it's good that you guys. Yes, yes. Well, I think that's good. I think did did you get assigned to doing that? Did you assign him to do that? No, no. no anybody can go. Yeah. I, I, can go. I, I can go. The reason I um, did I get e did get minutes for what for the last meeting. Mailed to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. Is the this? question is, you can't go scared. three three people oh. because then you you have a quorum. You can go one or two, two at a time, uh -huh. so we don't get in trouble. 
So that was all I have to say. Anybody else have reports? Um, yeah. any, reports? Is there any way you can find out the long, long, uh, the leg that we have, a long leg there, if it's uh, been checked out by the, the health? See if the, the water. The water? Yeah. They, d they do check it regularly they they're do. on some rotation. I don't yeah. know when the last time it was checked. Is they check a lot in the summer, I think. Is there yeah. any way you can when give me some uh, mm -hmm. idea when idea. was the last time they check it? Okay, I can. I know the in the summer, I think they do it yeah. weekly. Who um, does that? Is that Board of Health or is that um, Park and Rec? Uh, yeah, yeah usually Jim for code checking. Long leg. Yeah, it's okay. under us, though. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, because there's always somebody they might ask me um, that where the leg was checked. Mm -hmm. When? You know what I mean? So they feel better? I know we do it. But the question is, they, they, they like that. I, Sometimes it would be nice to put it on minutes. Oh, that is a good idea. Then they can go to the website. And Correct. It yeah. is posted somewhere. Yeah. Um, all summer, yeah, you know, during the yeah, swimming time, it so is posted. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's got to be out there somewhere. Maybe you could, because I know you're working on the website, right? So you could put a link to it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Because just put a link to it. You have everything. until next June to worry about that, really. <laughs> oh, it's yes. like 20 <laughs> steps for a link. <laughs> I just did oh, it. Oh, is list. it really? Uh, horrible. Anyway, <laughs> yes, got <laughs> that. <laughs> <coughs> mosquitoes. <coughs> oh, mosquitoes. Oh, mosquitoes. Oh, mosquito update. Okay. Did they, yeah. did they spread? <coughs> they sprayed yeah, Brewster yeah, they they the second time around, right? Yeah. They spread, they? yeah. yeah. All right. Any other on? Um, any other thing? Any other board member reports? No. This is from I have um, a bill to sign and um, some permits okay. to sign. Okay. okay. And, and then the next thing is correspondence. Ahead. Okay. So. We asked, we're not doing very well on our new rules where they have to give us a week and a half or whatever. I think she so I got an email today from Keith Bergman. You got to sign it so okay. she can get paid. To Planning Board, Board of Health, Board of Commissioners, Master Plan Implementation Committee, and Economic Development Committee. Please know that the Board of Selectmen has voted to request $2.2 million in design funding for the Littleton Commons Smart Sewer Project in Article 10 of the October 29, 2018 special town meeting. Um, your Don't boards had all voted to support a smart sewer funding article for the May 7, 2018 annual town meeting, which the selectmen get rescheduled for this fall's town meeting. May we list your boards as being in support of this latest article. The town meeting report with articles, motions, recommendations, and explanations goes to the printers on Tuesday, October 1, 2018. We'd like to be able again to reflect your board support of this project. Kindly confirm. Then he gives me links yeah. for more information. How much is going to cost to build yeah. the old? That's what I'm getting to. Right. Tell so me exactly how much is going to cost the old thing. I said we could vote on this tonight at the Board of Health meeting, but it's not on the agenda, so I'm not sure if it would be legal for us to discuss right. and vote. Can you or Anthony advise? They, Keith says, yes, you can do it under correspondence. Okay. Now, um, I asked for any changes in the proposed project since it was presented to us last. Erin, we're going for $2.2 million in design funding in this article design. rather than $1.5 million in the earlier one. Wait a minute. Design funding. And yes. that's another million. Yeah, so, so three million, three wait, million. you'll get more information. We're okay. looking to design all phases rather than just phase one. All right. We support express for many businesses and property owners. We didn't want to leave anyone out by funding just one phase. Mm -hmm. Since May, we've applied for a MassWorks grant of $3 million for the smart sewer and had an earmark of $6 million passed in the environmental bond bill. We're meeting with state officials on October 4 to discuss if, when, any, or all of these sums might be available. That's a little different than $45 million, right? So he. I asked if there was any the difference in the project it's itself. It's just the design, and it's the. But it's, it's through final design. It's not just phase one. Right. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. But I wanted to know if the project was the same, and no, it's I not mean, a, the project will not be the same. It's going to be smaller, I think. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know gonna, the answer. And they're going to use the high school. Ah. So it's very different. No, they were always going to use the high school. 
The original one. That was the discharge gallery, I think. The yeah. original was, go was going to be $35 million, and I told them, the engineer, that's going to be $45 million. Because they never, they never tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> because always something goes wrong. Right. So from, 40, from 35 to 45, I say, now we go to 6 million. So it's a smaller one. But they're only asking for us to support the $2 million for the design, design yeah. question on right. the this isn't economy. to build it. It's not to build it, no, it's I just know. to support $2 million right. to design it from start to Two million to plus another million, you told me, right? Uh, two, they're looking for 2.2 million. 2 .2 million. Okay. So my question here was, it's a big question, and we don't have a lot of information. We don't have information. That's what happened. And and so I was trying to think, like we're the board of health. You know what? What are we actually supporting? I mean, what are we supposed to? We're not economic development. We're not I planning. We're the board of no, health. Well, they want the support of the board of health. So because that require, you know, people say, well, you're on the board of health, so you. Don't, you should be happy that we have something like that. But the, like you say, the question, we don't have all the question. But it's still $2.2 .2 million for <coughs> the design, and that's oh, it yeah, right yeah. now. Oh, yeah, they got to start And that's all they're asking for us uh, for 10 At the meeting. moment, yes, yes. So does the, um, so does the, the, the sewering area, if we get sewer in that area, does it uh, promote and support public health better than what we're doing now? Right, for sure. And I have to run to the ladies, or do you need to adjourn? It's going to be a sort of like a limited thing. Mm -hmm. it's going to be um, and my question always is, oh, did right they now. do an alternatives analysis and a feasibility, you know, an alternatives analysis and a needs assessment? Like, what are we getting out of it? And is that the right, if we want to, you know, what's the objective? Right. right. So and I think is this accomplishing it? But within the, so I don't know the answer to that. That's the only smile. But I guess within the board, I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. within, well, so I was confused, like what we would be really asked, you know, saying. What's our part in it? What's our part of it, and how do we say that so we're specific? We, so we're not saying what well, we. I think support are, something we don't know anything about. Right. Yeah. There are a lot. I'm I think there are a lot that. of buildings I am too. in that district that have failed systems. Oh yeah. No, you, I agree with you. I do we know that though? But remember. I don't know. I, I know could, one. I, I could probably take a drive through town and <laughs> point out. Well, that is true. There is a, a but the question is we don't like you say we don't know. Yeah. They only gave us a phase, and then the. Oh, we have to add this. We have to add that. So is this the um, now design for the whole, the whole, the whole final, the whole design. thing, or just the nice full design? Design. No, that's what, that's what he said for. that rather than we're looking to design all phases, so they're going right all through. Phases. Yeah, which is different because you would do a lot of the feasibility needs in the phase one. Mm. Um, but is that something that we're supposed to be even considering? Is that, you know, I don't know. It's going to. I think it'll benefit public health to have a sewer in the common area. That's just my thought. What do you think, Gina? Uh, I think, uh, I like to, I like, you know, uh, give, uh, give an example, okay? You go to the mechanic and you ask him an estimate for because the engine is burned out. Now, you get the engine and then they say, oh, by the way, while we do the engine, we got to change the transmission. Oh, by the way, yeah. something else happened. It's another repair. So by the time it's done, it was probably cheaper to buy a new car than have a car fix. In this case here, only the design is two million point, okay? I don't care if it's only two million point, but they should give us the phase. What's going to be after that? I want to know, to it's going to go first. from two, bill, 2 million for the design, it's going to go to $40 million? Just ask it. Yeah. How far they want to go? But uh, as the Board of Health, are those the questions we're supposed to be that's, thinking that's about? One? Yeah, yes. Yeah, they are. Okay. Yes. All right, you answer the question. Because you, s you say yes to something you don't know. Yeah. It's like the lady, like the gentleman, he, made, he, he had a good question. But the question, we already bypassed that anyway. You know, and then she had to get well, another that, attorney. That's closed. I know, but I'm yeah. saying I'll give you an example. You always wanted to know the whole picture. What, what do you think? I'm really not comfortable um, voting on it because we don't know all the details on right. it. And 
I think it's bigger picture. I think it's, you know, do we want to look at a design? Do we want to pay $2.2 million to look at a design to figure out if that design is going to work for us? Right. Or put together, you know, and, and how much, you know, are there different designs that, you know, design A might cost us $10 right. million dollars to build, design B might cost us $20 million. So right. they faced it, that's what you they would have That's what happened. That's how they get you. But I think from a financial standpoint, that's not really our purview. I think we're just right. voting on whether um, we support it based on the betterment of public health for our town. Well, so I don't think we need to read too much into it. Right, because you're going to have a design. You're going to have a, the engineers are going to make the design. They're going to make options, and then it'll be another town meeting before we can or a before vote, vote on, before voted. which option, they'll figure out which option is, is better for the town, how it's, much it's going to cost, mm -hmm. and then that will go to the people and they'll vote, vote on that. So this is just a design, mm -hmm. you know. And we approved it six months ago. Well, we supported it six months ago when they were actually, actually it, was a bigger pro, it was a bigger project, mm -hmm. and then they took it off the ballot right. and scaled it back. Well, this is 1.5 million. The last one. The last one. The that last was just one. for phase one. Well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. We approved it last time. If not, it's 0.7 more. I don't know. And he says that we might even get funding for this phase too, for the design. That'd be great. The grants and three million dollar grant. grant. Make yeah. Eight hundred thousand. If they give it to me, dollars going to cost over thirty million. It, uh, that, I'm not reading it that way. Yeah. It's for the smart sewer, the three million. So this is implementation. They've already got. This is two two point two million more than the money they have already. Just I think close to a million. But I don't know if we're supposed to be looking at money because we don't have any information on it. <laughs> um, just, just, uh, does anyone have a motion that they want? <laughs> Up with. I, I, I don't know. I'll make a motion to get behind it. By a second. So just blanket. We support the board of health supports this. Um, I mean, say say what what it what it is. Uh, so I, I make a motion for it. the board of health to support the study and design of a smart sewer system, sewer disposal system uh, for the town common. This one, this it's one. the design funding. Design, design. design. Here, yeah. um, support the design. Then we're it's attaching to the money, though. We see the funding. Yeah, so support the design funding for the smart sewerage system. That's the, what we're supporting. Yeah. Do you? Does anyone have like an alternative motion? They want to. I don't know if that's Robert's rules, but. What do you got? I mean, I had okay. It'd be great if we didn't have to spend that much money on it. Yeah. I mean, I guess eventually it will come to a vote, right? So we are in the interest of progress and and um, public health. Yeah. yeah. In advancing the project to bring it to the town for them to vote on, I guess we we should give them a, a break. We should vote for it. Okay. Does anyone have Support a second on the um, motion? Oh, I, I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All opposed. Aye. The safe to go for me, then. Oh, sorry. Um, deed restrictions. Correspondence. Okay. Deed restriction policy. I saw it in the email, but I didn't see it on the printout. Oh, did we sign those? I things? didn't print it. Give out us, right? give us the permits. Yep, the permits. Give, them, give us the permits. Do you want to float that to the next meeting? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Continue that. I don't think we have to vote on that. Okay. Oh, this is. Um, so we can. Any? Do we have anything else? Yes, I. So somebody wants to end the meeting. No, I think we can do this outside. Those and you also had a one bill that was sent. To yeah, you. I got it right here. Yeah. But I think we can close the meeting and then sign this. Make a motion correct? to uh, no? adjourn. Okay. Second. Well, let's well, just let's finish. First let's finish. Okay. Just I'm pretty sure that. Well done. Yeah. That's all you have to. I just have to sign the one that I gave to you. Oh. That's all. All right. Where's the? Oh, so this is the one we heard tonight. Yeah. 
so one of them you continued. I'm sorry. I oh, yeah, we did. didn't. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I cross these out? No, just pass it back and I'll you tuck it away. Okay. This one? I'll ask her if we need to print it out again. That's no, the one we This one is too. Error. That's okay. Oh, this is dogwood. Yeah. Which so one is dogwood? Yeah. We approved yeah. that. Yeah, we did, yeah. Two bedrooms. Looking for the bedrooms. Uh huh. Always. We're ready. Mm. Two bedrooms. I figure out where this is. That's it. Do you have anything else to do? Two E's? Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks? Um, no, yeah. Yeah, two weeks. Animal. If not two before. Oh, okay. Why are you four? What are we, Fivers Club? What's that? It means that I'm, I used to go five clubs in a week, and now I'm going six. They didn't have it for six. What do you mean you go to different towns? Yeah. Oops. Did you sign this yet? No, I haven't yet. Um, on the dogwood, I think they also asked for a variance on the barrier and the house side of the system. It's not on the permit here. Jim types those up. I don't do anything with those. But it's on the plan. So. Did you sign oh. it? I th we we just have a actually mm -hmm. go ahead. alphabetical order. So is the environmental service on the bill? Is that Jim? Yep. Yeah. You know, actually I didn't look at it, Shelly just handed me the bill. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what it is. It's environmental service. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have Oops, uh, the mm -hmm. and Hello. we have a cottage way. You're gonna do that one up? Because we haven't signed that one yet. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just keeping track. Given that to me yet, yeah, I'm right? just yeah. keeping track on that. And we, I mean, I will come in. I can come in at lunch if you need those that signs. I don't know. Yeah. If it makes any difference to her, I know that he had the. So we can put this we adjourn the meeting and put it back in. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.